Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. Today is a palette bingo using Coloured Rain Queen of Hearts. And the person I'm collabing with is the ever so wonderful Jonathan. So, as I have said now, for what feels like forever, Sammy the Sloth Straw concurs, that now is the perfect time for you to grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, get comfy, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. I hope you had a fantastic holiday. Um, Christmas if you celebrate it, Kwanzaa if you're in the middle of celebrating that. Um, and if you don't celebrate any of those things, I hope you had a good Friday. Right. And we're actually recording this the day after Boxing Day. I still feel like I've eaten too much. Cue the haters to comment about how much I ate. To be fair though, I do want to thank everyone for their kind comments after my last film that I put up. Um, I really wasn't expecting such an outpouring of love, but I do appreciate it. Thank you. Now, today's film, as you will have seen from the intro, is a collab with the wonderful Jonathan. Uh, we'd planned this collab a while ago, but then life happened and we had to, you know, push it back a bit. But I decided, it's something that I've, I've been wanting to do this year and didn't really get around to it. So I'm going to try and do it next year, which is use more of my older palettes rather than keep buying new ones. I've got so many new palettes. Having said that, I have just bought the um, the other made by Mitchell, the head in the clouds to go with my feet on the ground because I liked the formula so much. Um, but 2021, I'm going to try not to buy as much try. Um, I want to enjoy the palettes that I've got that at the moment I'm really only using when I'm not filming because I've got so many other ones that I still haven't filmed with yet. I mean I've got a Halloween one that I bought that I still haven't filmed with yet. Um, I still haven't filmed with the red one of the uh, BH ice cream collection. Yes, a bit of a hint there on the back of the hand. This is a palette bingo, and I suggested a few different palettes to Jonathan, and we agreed on the Coloured Rain Queen of Hearts. Now, to me, in my last declutter, you will have seen that I decluttered Modern Renaissance. The reason for that is because if I was... I only really used Born Fresco out of it, because if I wanted that sort of colour scheme, I picked this up instead, which to me, it's not as dusty as ABH formula, and it lasted better on my lids as well. Um, so I actually used to reach for this one instead of Modern Renaissance, so I was quite happy to declutter that one. So, the numbers that I pulled ended up correlating to 
and I have swatched them out in order across the back of my hand. Royal Highness, Princess, so happy because I always reach for that one, Empress, Ladyship, and Dethrone. So that's the colour scheme that I'm working with today. Really nice. I'm going to clean that off now before I end up wiping it because I've got a white stripe on this top. And if I don't take this off the back of here, it's not going to be white for very long. <coughs> right, this is still a teaching channel. So I do go at a speed that beginners can keep up with. Partly because of my chronic pain. Um, and also because of my chronic pain, I zoom right in close to my eyes. So it means you don't have to see me wince all the time with pain. Um, you can see what I'm doing even if your eyesight's not what it was and you're watching me on a very small screen. Um, and also it does mean that if I'm cleaning a brush off or I'm you know, looking down to change brushes or add more pigment, you do get a lovely shot of my Widow's Peak hairline. But for me that's a... Uh, I'd rather that and have you be able to see what I'm doing in terms of what I'm doing with my eyes than be further out and have you going, oh, what's she doing there? Um, I actually treated myself just before Christmas to some spec there's the Spectrum Mean Girls brushes. Someone was selling them on Depop, so I've got those. So I'm going to be using Spectrum brushes today. I haven't used Spectrum for ages. Um, and I'm also about to insert a clip where I talk you through the difference between hooded and non and deep set eyes because the way that eyeshadow wears on them through the day and the issues that you have are very similar, but the actual way of applying your makeup, depending on which type of eye you have. Is actually quite different and I see a lot of people with deep set eyes say they have hooded lids and follow tutorials for hooded lids and wonder why they're not getting the result they wanted so that clip will be here in just a second or two it will be close up just my eyes so you can easily see what I'm talking about once that's done I will be back at the other end of it to apply some colored pigments to my eyelids each clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Chrome Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest. The deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well. So you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer, and then I buff it over yeah. with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid, 
if I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter even with glitter glue I get a bare patch in the middle because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't so they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right so I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are with my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner you can't see a lot of it but you can see it so I haven't got hooded lids it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you brought it up high enough you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I'm going to start off with the Spectrum B06, basically a big old fluffy brush. Um, and I'm going to do the Viennese Waltz of blending, which is natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there and then a reverse turn to come back out again. The reason I do this is because the skin on my eyelids moves. I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds. But I know slim teenagers who've got the same issue and if you just do windscreen wiper that's when you can get the issue of the lid folding over on itself and you get that barcoding or tiger striping which is a dead giveaway whereas with the Viennese Waltz blend you're ever so gently moving the skin around on your lid without pulling at it or stretching it so you're not doing any additional damage but you are making sure that all of the lid is covered Okay. I do occasionally throw a bit of a windscreen wiper in but I rely more on my Viennese Waltz I'm going to start off with Princess and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Jonathan. So I've collabed with Jonathan a couple of times now. Um, the first one that we did was um, a group collab. And uh, I think it was the Paulina one actually. So we did this group collab and we said we really must do, I don't know why this is looking orange. This brush is clean, there's no orange on the brush. So why is Princess coming up orange? Very good question. I'm just going to whip that off, redo my pr 
crying on my lid. Just while I continue chatting to you about Jonathan. So yeah, we um, we started off in this big group collab, and obviously you you have like a big group chat, and he and I got on really well in the group chats. He's a bit of a night owl, which obviously meant that he was up at the sort of time that I was awake over here in the UK. Um, so we, we chatted quite a bit and we said we really must do a collab together. And again, life happened for me, for him, for both, you know. And there was a, a bit of a delay between our saying we were going to collab and the first collab actually happening um, but we did a, a pick challenge and the thing that I love about Jonathan is you never know what sort of look he's going to do you know he could pull out um, a really stunningly blended it's still looking a bit orange isn't it and yet I know this brush is clean, because I cleaned it before I... Let's just, let's just go with it, folks. Um, yeah, you know, he, he, you never know whether he's going to produce something that's exquisitely blended, or if he's going to do something that's a lot more editorial with you know, harsh edges and sculpted lines. But I love that. I love that he does editorial looks as well as your standard, you know, wear it to go down the shops and look good behind your mask sort of thing. I love that about him. Um, his channel also covers fitness and lifestyle things as well. So I know during the first lockdown he was um, showing you how if you couldn't get into the gym because your gym was shut, how you could use sort of your stairwell and your block of flats and that to work out. Which I thought was really, really inventive and really clever. Um, he also covers fashion. He's, he really is an all-rounder. You know, you're going to find something on his channel that will capture your imagination. Um, and he's just such a lovely man. You know, he really is. He's, I've never heard him say a bad word about, about anybody. And that's the sort of people that I like to surround myself with, you know. Right, I'm going to go into Empress now, which is orange. So weird that Princess suddenly pulled so orange. How bizarre. This is proper orange. Same brush, I just cleaned it off on a clean washcloth. Um, I don't like using colour switches because I find they are far too harsh on the bristles of your brush especially if you're using natural hair I mean these are synthetic obviously but um, I just I don't use colour switches anymore I don't like what they do to my brushes um, I just use an old washcloth, face cloth, flannel, you can use an old tea towel, you can use, uh, I've got a couple of microfiber cloths that I use, I mean no matter how well you wash them, even when they're fresh out of the washing machine they end up a bit stained like this, if, especially if you're using pigments with them and things like that, but they are so much gentler on your brushes. I'd forgotten how soft spectrum brushes are.
I used to always use them and then I had people comment and they couldn't afford them. Could I try and find some cheaper alternatives? Because one of the things with Fibro um, is that your skin is super, super sensitive. Or at least mine is anyway. And I find that a lot of people with Fibro have the same issue. So if you use... I mean, I used to love using natural brush or brushes, but I use them far less often now just because they feel like they're scratching more so than a synthetic brush does. I know that's daft, but it's just how it is. I mean, some pigments you have to use a natural brush with to get any decent kind of finish with them. But Right, I'm just going to clean this brush off and then I'm going to go down to a slightly smaller brush. That orange just stained it a little bit. Never mind. Right, so that was a B06. I'm now going to go down to an A08, which is a more oval brush rather than being round because I want to try and concentrate this colour through the crease I don't really want to blow it too far up the eye because I still want this gorgeous warm orangey colour to stay a vivid part of the look so I'm going to go into Ladyship tap off well because with these sort of colours I would much rather build them up slowly than plump them on and then have to spend ages blending them out. I'm going to start right at the corner of my natural crease. If you've moved your crease this is where you now go to wherever you've moved it to. Um, I always put the darkest colour through the crease because dark colours recede and light colours come forward. So it's particularly useful as a you know a trompe l'oeil trick in the eye effect. If you have a deep colour when you've moved your crease. Because it gives the impression that that part of the eye just goes back in a little bit further. And with what's left on the brush I'm just going to run that through the crease. And then do the tiniest little circles just to blend them out a little bit. Shh. Normally I would mute my phone, but obviously, since Hubby got me the, uh, the ring doorbell, so that it's easier for me when people come to the door. a number of times I'd, particularly if I was in a lot of pain, it would take me a bit of a while to get up off the sofa. And by the time I'd got to the door, they'd have disappeared and there'd be a thing through the door saying, come to the post office and get what you put what you missed. Whereas now I can just say, yeah, hold on, I'm coming, hang on. It's also great, the other day I was upstairs with migraine and I was lying down. And it meant that I could, you know, anybody that came to the door, I could just chat to them without physically having to get out of bed. Which was good, because every time I stood up, I went dizzy and felt like I was going to chuck up everywhere. Migraines are awful, I hate them. Thankfully, I don't get them that often anymore. But when I do, oh boy, do I get them. Um, what I am doing is getting a tiny little bit of the pigment on the brush and just flicking it up at the edge there. I'm going to be tidying the edge up anyway but I'm doing this to kind of create a soft wing just on the outside edges there. And I'm just going to run that onto the outer edge of my mobile lid just to 
deepen that edge up a little bit as well because we've got quite a deep shimmer to go on there. You know, it's weird, in my mirror there is no patching at all, but on here it does look a little bit patchy on my viewfinder. That's the problem with filming in HD, unfortunately. But, as always, the photos of this, when the film goes live, will be up on Insta, and you'll be able to see then how they look when you're not filming through an HD lens, you know. One of the things about these Spectrum brushes is they're so soft. They really are great. I mean, if you can afford to get some Spectrum brushes or get them second hand from Depop like I did, just you know, give them a good clean before you use them. Um, they really are some of the softest brushes in terms of blending brushes if you struggle with very sensitive skin or if you have um, like a, an eczema or anything on your eyelids where you have to be super super careful not to you know overly stress the skin out definitely would recommend spectrums because um, although they're expensive, they're not like Hakoto or um, oh, what's the other one? The, the Wayne Goss brushes or um, there's another Japanese brand that I can't think of the name of right now. It's also really expensive and, and like Refa brushes. I've noticed a lot of sort of mid to large channels have been going on about. I get the feeling they may have had some in uh, either some healthy discounts or maybe a bit of PR coming out to them from the amount of people that are talking about them at the moment. I'm not saying they're lying about their opinion on them. I'm just saying for all of them to suddenly discover it at the same time. Mm. I really can't wait to see what Jonathan's going to do because obviously a lot of it depends on what colours you pull. I mean I was lucky that mine all were all tonal so I knew I could actually do a, a blended or an editorial but you know if you get colours that don't necessarily work next to each other you kind of have to think out of the box with it and, and it almost makes you do editorial whether you're ready to do an editorial or not you know but that's part of the fun of a palette bingo you never know what you're going to actually pull so great fun I love them I really do And like I said, I love watching Jonathan's channel as well. Right, I'm just going to grab my pad with my cellar water on it. I'm just going to tidy up the outer edge there. I don't like using tape. I know I could have done. But my view is if the tape is sticky enough that it's going to stop the powder from going under the edge of it then it's sticky enough that it's going to pull at your eyes when you are taking it off right I'm going to use an A16 <laughs> boo you haul on it basically one of these and once I've put the um, pigment onto it I'll be wetting it with this now, you can use any spray you want, but just never put a wet brush into a pressed pigment because you'll kill it. So I'm going to start off with Royal Highness, which is the, the lighter of the two, but still not, not the lightest in here. I'd 
forgotten how soft these um so long since I've used it I'd forgotten just how soft the shimmers are in this palette right so I've loaded both sides up and I'm just gonna you can use any liquid you want really um, and you can even just save an empty bottle and you know fill it with tap water just whatever you do please don't don't put a wet brush in a pressed pigment right this ferrule here is now wet so I'm going to tuck it into my knuckles and spin because I don't want the moisture going down oh, that ferrule is um, apparently not even attached anyway but the last thing we want is for moisture to get down there and loosen it from there as well because then you don't have a brush you have a stick fortunately that'll be easy enough just to glue back on so I'm going to come right into the corner here and just not very easy when you're trying to actually hold the ferrule on as well so I may grab a different brush to do the other right I'm just going to take this about a third of the way along the lid one back down there for the minute. I need to glue that one. Let's grab a same shape. And, uh, back into Royal Highness to do the other eye. Obviously, if I was still going to be using the Spectrum brush, I would have dried it off on the washcloth before going back in. Now. With this eye, because of the super deep creasing I've got just here, from where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old, I do have to break a rule, which I always tell you not to do, which is that I have to stretch my lid out. Because if I don't, what happens is the pigment packs loosely into those creases when it's wet and as it dries, it flakes into my eye and down my face. It's painful and it's it doesn't look too good but I only pull the lid out as far as I need to to straighten the creasing I apply and blend the colour and then I gently put the eye back I don't pull it out to my ear roll and I don't just let it ping back and you'll see there's a lot more movement in this lid because of the damage it's had. Right. Clean and dry the brush and then I'm going to go into Dethroned, wasn't it? It was the other one that I'd pulled. Which is the deep chocolatey brown shimmer. I always wet shimmers regardless of brand. Um, I find it helps with fallout and it also helps with um, if, if the shimmer's not the sort of thing that would normally apply with a brush, i.e. if you would normally apply it with your fingers, by applying it wet from a brush you can actually get the same amount of light reflection. So I'm just going to pop this onto the remaining third of the lid that to this point had no pigment on it. And then using the very tip of the bristles, I'm just going to blend where it meets that burgundy mat. And then lightly drag the Royal Highness shade across onto the dethrone. Dry the brush off and back into dethrone to do the other eye. How's your day been? Has it been a good one? 
the hope it has. And if it hasn't, well, then I hope that tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, watching me over your cornflakes or in your shower or wherever you choose to watch me, then my darling I hope your day is as fabulous as you are. Again, use the tip of the bristles, just buff that into the mat and then lightly drag the lighter Royal Highness Shimmer across onto dethrone so we get a nice blend where the two colours meet I really like that right my lovelies despite that first colour not being what I was expecting for it to suddenly be tad orange I don't remember it being that sort of peachy orange I remember it being more like born fresco it shows you how long it is since I've used this palette, doesn't it? Good grief. Right. I'm going to pause you now while I, um, you know, put some base products on, do my brows, yada yada yada. And I will be back to finish off this eye look now. I've got a bit of time before I can talk to you again, but for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely instant. Hey, 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 my lovelies, I am back. As you can see, I did a soap bronze, and I was a jolly good girl. I didn't dip into any of the colours that I hadn't already pulled, so I used a Ladyship, which is obviously the burgundy that I used here colour in said brows. Right, going in with a flat top brush now into Ladyship again. She's getting some usage today. No, that's not the sort of joke we tell on this channel. Okay, maybe it is. Right, I'm just going to link this up to that soft wing that we've done. And bring it along under the eye. This is great if you're just starting to do wings as well because then you can follow the line you've made with the powder in order to create your gel or your liquid liner wing. So if you're not sure on shaping or angles or anything, do it with powder first. And then just follow it with the liquid. It's so much easier. Or, just like I do, just stamp the outside edge of it just slightly. So it's ever so fractionally darker. And then that gives the same impression. It's, it's sort of... It pulls the eyes out and up, which gives you a more wide awake, more youthful look. Right, now I normally use my Tarte Graveyard Girl palette brush, but just to prove the point, I'm going to rub my Spectrum A13, is butter a carb, and show that you can use any thick smudger brush. I'm going to go back into Princess, which confused me by being so orange. And I'm going to use that to buff out that lower lash line. Now, sometimes I can use pencils in my liner, in my waterline. A lot of the time I can't, because my eyes are just too sensitive. But by doing this and sort of smoking the lower lash line you're finishing the eye look off so you're, you're sort of framing the natural eye hmm. 
like that. Right, grab. I haven't used this one for a while. This is my Pixie by Petra Subtle Sunrise Glowy Gossamer Duo. And this is a really cheap lip brush that's over 10 years old. So I'm going to start off by going into this golden-y side, golden champagne side. I'm going to pop some of that just up under the tail of my brow. Because folks, along with everything else that gravity hits, apparently it also hits your brows. Great. Uh, but by adding either a matte or a shimmer highlight shade, the tail end of the brow. It just gives the illusion that the brow is lifted and again helps with the more youthful, open-eyed, awake look. I'm going to use the same colour on the inner corner and I'm going to drag that along just under the tear duct and blend it in just with the start of the colours that I've run under my eye. You don't have to do this, you can just stop at the inner corner like this. But I just find on my eye shape I like to finish it off by sort of bringing it around and just fading it into just to really frame the look. Now I haven't decided yet which of these two I'm going to use as a highlight on my cheek. This is the one that I've used on my eye. I might use this one which is slightly pinker because I've used um, a Charlotte Tilbury blush on my cheek. Um, it's in shade Love Glow and it's quite a similar shade if you look to this pinky one here so I think it'll just blend softly into the blush which is kind of the look I want today I think so my beautiful ones I am going to pause you once again while I put some mascara on, uh, chuck some highlight on my cheeks, do something with my hair, decide what lippy I'm going to wear and then when all of that's done I'll be back to finish off the film. Once again you don't have to wait because that's coming right now. I am back. Okie dokie, my eye has just started running by the way, which is perfect timing as always. Um, I used my Mini It Superhero Mascara. Still not quite sure how I feel about this one, you know. I did use the pink side of the highlight, but then just at the very top there, used the champagne side. The Lip Gloss is a new one that I bought from September Rose in shade Sweet. Really comfortable, not sticky, not gummy. Very lightweight, very similar actually in feel to the Fenty Glosses. I do of course have a discount code of a Bomber which you can use with September Rose and save yourself a little bit of money right my lovelies this is my finished look using the numbers that I pulled at random from the coloured rain palette so what do we think? how did I do? does it look ok? yes? no? maybe? not sure? 
I like it. I like it a lot. But then, I don't think I've ever done a look from that palette and not liked it. So, which is rare for me because I don't normally go for warm toned looks, as you know. Right. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are oh, unsubscribing you. But they are leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious you've been unsubscribed. Don't just check my channel, check all the channels that you follow. Um, also double check your notification status for each of them. Because although at the moment YouTube don't seem to be sending emails, um, I did notice that mine had all been knocked back to personalised rather than all. So if they do decide at some point to pull the finger out the butt and start sending emails again, you're not going to get them if it says personalised rather than all. Uh, once you have done that, I'm going to need you to go across to my lovely friend Jonathan and check out his film. If you don't already follow him, you're missing a trick. He pulls some amazing looks out. He really does. Um, and just do all the good YouTuber things. Drop him a like, drop him a comment, tell him you're here from 4F. Just show him the same amount of love that you always show me in my comments. Right, if you are here from Jonathan's channel, or you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, this is pretty much what you get from me with my films. You get me waffling on about everything and nothing and everything in between those two. Um, while I apply colour pigments to my face, usually. So if that sounds like the kind of thing that you wouldn't mind listening to more often, and uh, maybe even watching as well, <clears throat> it'd be awesome if you too would like to join the nicest family on YouTube, that is the 4F family. Super easy to do, you just hit that subscribe button, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that YouTube starts sending them again. In the meantime, I have a very large back side, yes, but also a catalogue of films that you can watch. I've got other palette bingos, I've got other collabs, I've got tutorials, I've got um, challenges, tag films. I even read my favourite poem in one of them, and that's Hubby coming in the back door. In case you. Oh, okay. We had a high winds last night, nothing to do with the Brussels sprouts at Christmas, but we have had a couple of uh, fence panels pop out, so hubby and the uh, the neighbour are going to pop those back into place. Oh, it's very brisk with that back door open. Anyway, um, as I was saying, uh, there's an awful lot of films you can watch, so if you're looking for a little bit of me time, and I feel like I've said this since time immemorial, Grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy and indulge, my darlings. Because what better way to chill out than just listen to me waffling at you in what I'm told is quite a soothing voice. Right, my lovely ones, as ever, all that remains for me to say. Is your stay fabulous? And I will see you next time. Bye for now.